thought to sing one malayalam song uh, one which everybody knows nandi or a chance to the party
നമുക്കിനി ബൈബിൾ വായിക്കുന്നത് നോവ സാംസ് ഫോർട്ടി സങ്കീർത്തനങ്ങൾ നാൽപ്പത് Psalms 40 I waited patiently for the Lord he turned to me and heard my cry he lifted me out of the slimy pit out of the mud and mire he set me he set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand he put a new song in my mouth a hymn of praise to our God many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord blessed is the man who makes the lord his trust who does not look to the proud to those who turn aside to false gods many o lord may my god and the widow and the windows of you have done things you planned for us no one can recount to you were i to speak and tell of them they would be too many to declare sacrifice and offerings you g- did not desire but my ears you have pierced burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not require then i said here i am i have come it is written about me in the scroll i decided to do your will o oh my god Your law in is within my heart I proclaim righteousness in the great assembly I do not seal my lips as you know O Lord I do I do not hide your righteousness my in my heart I speak of your faithfulness and salvation I do not conceal your love and your truth from the great assembly Do not withhold your mercy from me, O Lord. May your love and your truth always protect me. For, for troubles without number surround me. My sins have overtaken me and I cannot see. They are more than the hairs of my head. And my heart falls and my heart fails within me. Be pleased. O oh Lord to save me O oh Lord come quickly to help me may all who seek to help take my life be put to shame and confusion may all who desire my ruin be turned back in disgrace may those who say to me ha ha be ashamed at your own shame but may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you may those who love your salvation always say the lord is exalted yet i am poor and needy may the lord think of me you um, are my help and my deliverer my oh my god do not delay here in the reading jo lijo lucos ലിജോ ഇപ്പോഴും ഇൻഡസ്ട്രി പ്രയർ ചെയ്യും your love has been a great for us we often falter speak bad do bad but still you make us realize our faults and lead us closer to you god we thank you for loving us so much god i pray for the world we are living today we never expected the world to be so injured and bleeding god you placed us in this planet earth as stewards to care to take care of it but we did not do that lord and we now suffering god heal the so we can testify your name lord god I pray you be with there be there who the largest affected country today we pray for the assam floods 
we pray for the states who are going through several challenges we don't come don't come on social media which doesn't come in on social media your touch is your touch is enough for them we pray for our sabha our churches around our communities our uncles and aunties and children bless them keep them safe under your wings remove all anxiety and give us the peace of mind pray for the front warriors and also for the policemen who are serving serving for us bless them and give them strength pray for all our youth from several places who have joined this meeting we took who took out some time to meditate and listen to our word to your word bless our youth we are going through several challenges anxiety and pressure and being stuck at home give us peace and happiness god god i pray for the children who have got into got wonder results in their board exams guide them for the better future we pray for the georgie etchen who's leading the session bless him father enable his words he shares reaches our heart and be blessed let this time we spend be blessed the times during the pandemic days keeping this points i request vinisha to lead us in prayer let our head almighty lord our heavenly father thank you for giving us another day in our lives and for all the blessings that you have showered on us we thank you for this time you have given us and brought us together lord i pray for those who are suffering and struggling during this pandemic lord touch them and heal them lord i also pray for those who are facing challenges during this pandemic lord lord be with them guide them and protect them lord lord thank you for bringing us together here so that we can give praise and glory to you through this fellowship lord lord make us your channel of your blessing to all the people we meet lord lord empower us lord with your holy spirit so that we can go into this world and proclaim the good news of salvation lord lord we also pray for matthew george achan and prince achan and their families lord lord thank you lord for their able leadership and inspiring guidance strengthen them lord more and more in the ministry lord so that more and more lives are touched and transformed lord we thank you once again for all the blessings you have showered upon us lord we pray lord that you continue to protect and guide us lord lord i commit our prayers into your mighty hands lord in jesus most precious name i pray amen Lord, we thank you for this wonderful moment, Lord. Be with us and guide us, and uh, the prayers what we are surrendered to you, Lord. Keep us in, uh, keep keep us all safe, and uh, we just give it back to Achin uh, to lead this uh, this session again. Amen. Amen. നമുക്ക് ഒന്നിച്ച് വരുവാനായിട്ട് ദൈവം ഇടയാക്കിയല്ലോ പ്രിയപ്പെട്ട മാത്യൂസ് ജോറേഴ്സിനെ പരിചയപ്പെടുത്തി കൊള്ളട്ടെ പ്രിയപ്പെട്ട അച്ഛൻ ബാംഗ്ലൂരിന്റെ ഭാഗം തന്നെയാണ് അച്ഛന് ഇവിടെ പഠനം അച്ഛന്റെ ഇവിടെയാണ് നടത്തിയത് അച്ഛൻ ഫാദർ ഡോക്ടർ ജോർജ് മാത്യു അച്ഛൻ വാസ് ദ വിക്കാർ ഓഫ് മർത്തുമ ചർച്ച് പിംറോസ് റോഡ് അച്ഛന് നമുക്ക് കുറച്ചും കൂടെ കുറച്ചും കൂടെ പരിചയമാകും നമ്മുടെ ടോമി അച്ഛന്റെ എൽഡെ ബ്രദറാണ് അവന്റെ അവരെ ഫാദറും രണ്ട് മക്കളും അച്ഛന്മാരാണ് നാളെ നമ്മുടെ നമ്മുടെ ഇടവകയുടെ പ്രാർത്ഥനയിൽ മെറിൻ മാത്യൂസൺ അത് ഒരു കസിൻ ബ്രദറാണ് അപ്പൊ ഇവരെല്ലാരും ഈ ഒരു വലിയ ശുശ്രൂഷ ദൈവികമായ ശുശ്രൂഷ ചലഞ്ച് ആയി ഏറ്റെടുത്ത് അനുഗ്രഹീതമായി പ്രവർത്തിക്കുന്ന ആളാണ് ജോർജി അച്ഛൻ എനിക്ക് വളരെ ചെറിയ പ്രായം മുതലേ അറിയാം ഒരു അനുഗ്രഹിക്കപ്പെട്ട ഒരു ശാന്തനായ ഒരു യൗവനക്കാരനായി വളർന്ന ദൈവത്തിന്റെ കരുണയിൽ അനുഗ്രഹീതമായ ശുശ്രൂഷ ദൈവനിടെ അച്ഛനെ സംബന്ധിച്ചിടത്തോളം കൂടുതൽ അച്ഛന്റെ ശുശ്രൂഷ ആദ്യം ആരംഭിച്ചതും ഇപ്പോഴ് അച്ഛൻ വന്നതും ഒക്കെ തന്നെ ബോംബെയിൽ നിന്നാണ് ബോംബെയിലെ നമുക്കറിയാം 
അവിടുത്തെ യൂത്സിനെ ആകമാനം അവരുടെ ജീവിതത്തിൽ കർത്താവുമായുള്ള ബന്ധത്തിൽ അവരെ നയിക്കുന്നതിന് പ്രിയപ്പെട്ട അച്ഛന്റെ വിവിധമാളുടെ യൂത്ത് മിനിസ്ട്രി അല്ല അതിന്റെ പല പല ഡയമെൻഷൻ അച്ഛന്റെ നല്ല ഒരു ബാൻഡ് ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു നല്ല ക്ലാസ്സസ് ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു എല്ലാം തന്നെ ഒത്തിരിയധികം മോട്ടിവേഷണൽ ടോക്സ് എല്ലാം തന്നെ അച്ഛന് അവരുടെ ഇടയിൽ വളരെ ഒരു വലിയ അവരുടെ ഹൃദയങ്ങളിൽ വലിയ സ്ഥാനം പിടിക്കുവാനായിട്ട് ഇടയായി പ്രിയപ്പെട്ട അച്ഛനെ കുറിച്ച് ആ രീതിയിൽ ബോംബെ ഭദ്രാസനത്തിന് ഏറ്റവും അഭിമാനിക്കത്തക്ക ഒരു വലിയ ശുശ്രൂഷയാണ് പ്രിയപ്പെട്ട അച്ഛനിലൂടെ ബോംബെയിൽ നടത്തപ്പെട്ടത് അച്ഛൻ ഇപ്പോൾ നമ്മുടെ യു ടി സി യുണൈറ്റഡ് തിയോളജിക്കൽ കോളേജിൽ ഹയർ സ്റ്റഡീസിനായിട്ട് പോസ്റ്റ് ഗ്രാജുവേഷൻ ആയിട്ട് വന്നതാണ് അച്ഛൻ വന്ന് ജോയിൻ ചെയ്ത് ഇന്നലെ വൈകിട്ട് വന്നു അച്ഛൻ ക്വാറന്റൈനിലാണ് അപ്പോൾ അച്ഛന് അവിടെ ഇരുന്നുകൊണ്ടാണ് നമ്മളോട് കൂടെ ഇതിൽ സംബന്ധിക്കുന്നത് അച്ഛനും കൊച്ചമ്മയും രണ്ടു മക്കളും പ്രിയപ്പെട്ട അച്ഛൻ നമ്മളോടെ ഞാൻ പറയുകയുണ്ടായ അച്ഛന് ബാംഗ്ലൂരിൽ ഒന്ന് വീണ്ടും വന്നപ്പോൾ ഒരു ലോഞ്ചിങ് ആണ് എബ്ബാൾ മർത്തോമ യുവന സഖ്യ അടുക്കളം അതുകൊണ്ട് അച്ഛനെ ബാംഗ്ലൂരിലെ യുവന സഖ്യ അംഗങ്ങൾക്ക് മാത്രം എല്ലാവർക്കും പുതിയ തലമുറയ്ക്ക് കൂടുതൽ പരിചയമാകുക അതുപോലെ തന്നെ ഈ നമ്മുടെ ഇന്നത്തെ മീറ്റിംഗിൽ പല സ്ഥലത്തു നിന്നുള്ള യൂത്ത് സംബന്ധിക്കുന്നുണ്ടല്ലോ എല്ലാവർക്കും അതൊരു നന്മയായി തീരട്ടെ എന്ന് പ്രാർത്ഥി പ്രാർത്ഥനയോടെ പ്രിയപ്പെട്ട ജോർജിയസിനെ നമ്മുടെ ഈ കൂട്ടായ്മയിലേക്ക് സന്തോഷത്തോടെ സ്വാഗതം ചെയ്യും നമ്മുടെ ഈ മീറ്റിംഗിൽ നമ്മുടെ ബാൽ മാർത്തുമ്മ യുവനസഖ്യ തന്നെ ഏറ്റവും സന്തോഷമുണ്ട് പല സ്ഥലങ്ങളിൽ നിന്നുള്ള യൂത്ത്സ് നമ്മളോട് കൂടെ ചേർന്നിട്ടുണ്ട് എന്നുള്ളത് ഏറ്റവും സന്തോഷമാണ് കേരളത്തിൽ നിന്നും പല സ്ഥലങ്ങളിൽ നിന്നും കുവൈറ്റിൽ നിന്ന് വരെ യൂത്ത്സ് പങ്കെടുക്കുന്നുണ്ട് എന്നുള്ളത് എന്റെ സന്തോഷമാണ് അതുകൊണ്ട് പല സ്ഥലങ്ങളിൽ നിന്ന് യൂത്ത്സ് നമ്മളോട് കൂടെ ഉണ്ട് കുവൈറ്റിൽ നിന്ന് മാത്രമല്ല മസ്കറ്റിൽ നിന്നുണ്ട് ദോഹയിൽ നിന്നുണ്ട് അങ്ങനെ നമ്മുടെ പല സ്ഥലത്തു നിന്നും നമ്മുടെ സ്നേഹിതരൊക്കെ നമ്മളോട് കൂടെ ഉണ്ട് അതുകൊണ്ട് അത് ഹെബാൾ യു എൻ എസ് എക്കെ സംബന്ധിച്ചിടത്തോളം സന്തോഷത്തിന്റെ ഒരു സമയം കൂടിയാണ് ലഭിക്കുന്നത് നല്ല ഫെലോഷിപ്പ് ആണല്ലോ അതുകൊണ്ട് നമ്മുടെ സഭ പല സ്ഥലങ്ങളിൽ ആയിരിക്കുമ്പോൾ നമുക്ക് ഒന്നിച്ച് ലഭിക്കുന്ന ഇത്തരത്തിലെങ്കിലും നമുക്കൊന്ന് കൂടി വരുക ദൈവം ഇടയാക്കി ഓർത്ത് ദൈവത്തെ സ്തുതിക്കുന്നു നിങ്ങൾ എല്ലാവരെയും സന്തോഷത്തോടു കൂടെ ഹെബാൽ മർത്തോപ്പ യു എൻ എസ് എക്കെ തന്റെ നാമത്തിൽ എല്ലാവരെയും സ്വാഗതം ചെയ്യുന്നു വെൽക്കം യു ഓൾ ദിസ് സെഷൻ മാറ്റിസ് ജോർജ് respected uh, prince sachin and my dear friends it's such a joy and honor to be with you this evening uh, on this online platform together as a youth meeting i thank uh, prince sachin for all the kind words achan enne sunday school padipichana rendu varsham engale vakyam parnyalo achan parayna homework cheyondu vannara njanku pencil and rubber okke tharuvarunnu this was in the <laughs> mid 1990s uh, the reason i learned the nicene creed by heart in malayalam അത് സാറ് പറഞ്ഞതുകൊണ്ട് പ്രിൻസ് സാറായിരുന്നു ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് അന്നേരം അപ്പൊ ഞാൻ ആദ്യത്തെ ആഴ്ച ശരിക്കും പറഞ്ഞില്ല അതുകൊണ്ട് എനിക്ക് റബ്ബർ കിട്ടിയില്ല അതുകൊണ്ട് അങ്ങനെ ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് ഞങ്ങളെ മോട്ടിവേറ്റ് ചെയ്ത് ഞങ്ങളെ രണ്ട് രണ്ട് എനിക്ക് ടു ആൻഡ് ഹാഫ് ഇയേഴ്സ് അച്ഛൻ പഠിപ്പിച്ചു സോ ഐ റിമെമ്പർ ദാറ്റ് വിത്ത് താങ്ക്ഫുൾനെസ് ഞങ്ങളുടെ വീടിനടുത്തായിരുന്നു അച്ഛൻ പിന്നീട് അച്ഛൻ സെമിനാരിലൊക്കെ പോവുകയുണ്ടായി ഇതൊരു ശുശ്രൂഷ തുടങ്ങിയ സമയത്തും ഇപ്പൊ ഐ കെയിം ടു ബോംബെ ഫസ്റ്റ് ഹാഡ് ട്രാവൽ റൗണ്ട് വിത്ത് പീത്തോ സിർമിനി ദാറ്റ് ടൈം ഓൾസോ We went to Surat and Achan was there. Uh, he was shepherding a lot of students who were, were planning to join uh, seminary and preparing for entrance. They all came to the seminary. They came to the seminary and they came to the seminary. They came to the seminary and they came to the seminary. They came to the ministry and they came to the seminary. Thank you so much, Achan, uh, for your very kind words. Um, it's, it's good to be back in Bangalore, although it's a lockdown. uh many uh, new faces to me uh, when i was a youth here in bangalore in the uh, in the 2000s from 2001 to 2010 uh, the most um, i used to interact with a lot of youth and benjamin and rijo were the people i contacted most uh, or interacted most from those times so i see ben here uh, so i remember those uh, blessed times and i see a few more family faces praise has been uh, in touch with me regarding the session so praise is from bombay and she's actively been a youth and a youth ministry participant from bombay and now she is in uh, um, bangalore so praise god for all of you all of you who have joined from the, uh, different places achin itrayam vere paladuthu join cheyadu anupo njan onnu netti nanichu the youth group meeting aayirikum but thank you sanu sanu gave me a heads up uh in the year weekend i don't want to bombard you with a lot of information but i'd like to have spend the first few minutes uh, discussing a few things then i'd share what i'd like to share 
So I've been given half an hour. I hope I won't have to exceed that together with each one of you. So thank you once again, uh, Hebal Marthoma Church, Prince Sachin, and the whole team for having me. Uh, it's indeed an honor. It's my first session as an action here, uh, you know, as I come here for MTH in Bangalore. So uh, we just came day before yesterday night. So thank you for having me. I hope uh, we can all grow together in the Lord uh, and interact and uh, know the Lord deeper and closer and uh, you know understand our church our faith and ourselves uh, through our life so that we can be a blessing to everybody you know when god called abraham the call was to be a blessing to all nations sagala jaadigalkum anugrahamaya thiruvan vendiyana abraham avlichathu so we are the descendants of abraham in faith so that's our calling so the question is can we how can we a blessing in the place where i am today how can we bloom where we are planted and if the lord is taking us to a new place how can we be a blessing there for the name of the lord adana eppozhum nammal chodichu kondirikkanadhu so jesus christ is a model for us so as you would have rightly seen um, perhaps if you known the topic for today is uh, perhaps unusual for a christian um, um you know meeting uh, have any of you seen that topic uh, you could unmute your mic in between and say it yeah? it just had two letters and it's the favorite yeah. sound in this yeah. world yeah it's the, it's 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 our favorite topic in this world because at the end of the day it all boils down to me right uh, yeah. it's about me what do i have in this what am i going to get in this uh how was this day for me how are my you know how is tomorrow going to affect me how is this pand- pandemic affecting my job prospects so me is the central lens through which we look at life uh i just like to begin by reading from the word of god galatians chapter 2 verse 20 which was taken as a key verse so can we all turn to Ga- paul's letter st paul's letter to galatians chapter 2 verse 20 galati legnam randam adhyayam 20am vakyam i have been crucified with christ and i no longer live but christ lives in me the life i live in the body i live by faith in the son of god who loved me and gave himself for me the life i live i live in the body i live by faith in the son of god who loved me and gave himself for me. let's pray Precious God, as we sit before your word, we pray that your presence will strengthen us and guide us. May our hearts be prepared to receive you and to know you closer. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. I don't know how many of you have watched this old animation movie called Wreck-It Ralph. There's a character called Ralph who is a bad guy, and he's a bad guy, but his team, he's part of a game. uh it's it's about the it's a world within a video game an arcade video game and how you know what all happens over so this guy who is a bad guy in the game wants to be the good guy but he can't be the good guy good guy because that will mess with the program so he has to remain a good guy so a bad guy and he wants to get a medal and become a good guy but everybody stops him from doing that you know often in life we also want to be the good guy you know there's a there's a there's a moment in that movie where just like alcoholic you know uh, addicts alcohol addicts have this alcoholics anonymous they have like a bad anon in this game and he comes and tells you know all the bad guys you know it's not good to be the bad guy i don't want to be the bad guy anymore so all the bad guys go like oh how can you say that you can't mess with the program you have to remain the bad guy uh, when it comes to christian faith we also want to be the good guys uh, most of the time but then we are pulled from every side and on to top that situations like the pandemic come situations like struggles come in life uh, a lot of connected things come in our life which pulls us to different sides and then we start wondering how can i remain faithful as a christian how can i follow christian principles so there becomes a big problem so what i'd like to do today is to just dissect what it means to be me right uh, we all have a self what does it mean to be me okay so i'm going to throw the question open to you next 5 minutes i'd like to use to find out what makes you you 
what makes you you if you want you can chat to put your responses in the chat or unmute your mic and share what makes you you your behavior sorry your behavior okay behavior makes you you okay fine but where does that behavior come from for example you were born in this world did you come pre programmed with that behavior no knowing what it means to be you do you guys believe there is something known as you something unique known as you is there a self because if you're going to deny it i'm going to say uh, i'm going to say let's ask your parents or let's ask your spouse because they're going to tell you oh, okay they they definitely put you know these guys definitely say me i so if you're saying there is an i and a me to you uh, what makes you you some of it family okay so family so family makes you you a part of it influences okay so when you say my choice does that make it your family's choice or your choice my choices are my choice but a uh, part of my choice is also influenced by the advice and you know family's acceptance okay so counter question again so is the do you really have a choice ninga yes. koi choice how do yes. you have it? because you've been influenced right i have a choice to uh, you know uh, bow down to the influence or to stand against it okay so, so where how much I... how much of the influence i want to you know accept and how much i want to reject okay so where did that choice like you know uh, i'd like to know where where did you get that sensibility to make a choice what influence a choice is is that like an original choice like a uni like some people have their own comps when they make music so this is like an original song this is not a cover song so is your choice really your choice this could be anybody anybody could answer it's not between just me and uh, able sister uh, our choices are mainly influenced by the experiences we do have our past experiences or we could be influenced by what we have come through or what we have learned from a like long run so some things have been deposited into your life and that makes you make those choices is it yes we do learn day by day from each thing we have come through so okay okay so that means there is no unique you is that true or am i wrong no there is a unique us but uh, like uh, as as that other person said we could uh, choose to do that thing or we could choose not to do that thing but we select that based on our experiences right so like so you you make the choice this is good for me this is not good for me right so what is that joy, choice based on like how do you know what's good for you ഈ പുള്ളി എങ്ങോട്ടാ പോകുന്നതെന്നാണ് നിങ്ങളുടെ ചിന്ത എനിക്ക് നല്ലപോലെ അറിയാം എന്നാലും ഐ ജസ്റ്റ് വോണ്ട് ടു കൺഫ്യൂസ് യു ഫോർ വൈൽ ഐ ആം നോട്ട് കൺഫ്യൂസ് യു ബട്ട് റിയലി എക്സാം ബിക്കോസ് വി ആർ വെരി ലൈക് ഫോർ എക്സാമ്പിൾ മീ ഐ ആം ക്വൈറ്റ് ആഡമെന്റ് ദാറ്റ് ഐ ആം യുണീക് ഐ ഹാവ് മൈ ചോയ്സസ് ദിസ് ഇസ് മൈ വേ ഇറ്റ്സ് മൈ വേ ഓർ ദ ഹൈ വേ ഓ ഐ ലൈക് ടു ഡു തിങ്സ് മൈ വേ ഐ ലൈക് ഐ ഹാവ് മൈ ഓൺ ചോയ്സസ് ഐ ലൈക് ടു ഹാവ് മൈ ഹെയർ ഇൻ എ പെർട്ടിക്കുലർ വേ ഐ ഡിൻ ഹാവ് എ ചോയ്സ് അബൌട്ട് ദ ഹെയർ but uh, uh, we'd like to have a hair or hairstyle in a particular way we'd like to have a, a dressing in a particular way my question is so we're saying that we have influences the, then we are also saying there is some part of me that that is unique do i really have a choice regarding these things uh, so I'm, um thank you for the discussion let's continue i'm i'm just going to try to uh, draw out what you are saying regarding what it means to be uh, you right oops sorry yeah um let's try this yeah 
So Cal Newport, if you if you're a person who re loves reading, um, uh, you know, productivity efficiency related books, Cal Newport is a person who uh, has written the book called Deep Work. Or oh, so good that they cannot ignore you. So these are all very high productivity books, and he's a productivity freak. I, he got his PhD from MIT and currently he is a professor in Georgetown University. So he says in his book three, uh, you know, uh, deep work, only three people can survive this pandemic and the current job market. One, the people who have capital. Number two, the people who are good with interacting with machines. And number three, people who are really good at what you do who are really good at what they do. Only three people can survive. Otherwise, the rest of the people can be replicated and automated. So I'm just asking during this time, during this pandemic, there are questions about what will remain of us because it's been a difficult time uh, for, for us as, a, as employees, as youngsters, as families. And we will be questioned about who are you? What are your values? What is your job ethic? What will you do to stay in the job? What will you do to get in the job? What will you do to remain a question? All of these will be put forward to us in one way or the other. So I'm asking you, what does it mean to be you? So let's try drawing this out, okay? So you're, this is you as a child. You come as an empty slate, okay? And then what are some of the influences that come on you to make you you? You can unmute and speak, yeah? Upbringing. Okay, upbringing. So let's say family, yeah? So your family, there's a layer of family. There's a real layer of family on you. Fine. So okay, then. Society. Society. Our friends. Specific regarding society. Your own uniqueness. I'll question that. What does that mean? Something that God has given you naturally, you know? For example, some of us like Hobbies. music, some of us like art, some of us like science, like that. But, but is the child born with this ability to, you know, do art and have a liking towards science, or is that some way influenced or programmed by the ones around us? Okay, somebody said friends, so I'm going to add friends. I don't know how much of an influence friend has, okay? But definitely, friends are definitely a big part of our life, okay? Then. Religion. Okay, faith in which we are born into. Okay, the faith in which we are born into. Okay, right. People around that. Us. You have to be specific. Chuma, random people around us can influence, or, or are you meaning a specific person? No, just it depends. You know. Depends on what. <laughs> if they're good, then you might be good. If they're bad, you might turn out bad. So how how do, how do, so you're just uh, you know uh, you're just a passive person who just gets influenced by the good or bad or do you have a choice? How does it? No, I think about it. If it's bad, I I I don't, I don't follow it. How do you know if something is bad or good? It's pretty obvious, you know, Arjun. No, no, <laughs> it's not obvious. How is it obvious? Then, then we wouldn't need the law. We wouldn't need police. We don't need crime and punishment. So all of that, you know. I'm just trying to problematize who we think is me. Okay, so I'm playing the advocate and the devil's advocate at the same time. So this is me as a bo born as a baby. So this is what we said as family. Genetic and, coding. Okay, let's have genetic coding. So there are parts of us that are genetically programmed, but the science also says not all parts of us. Okay, let's put it up like this, okay? We'll draw it as a lineup. There's a part of us. So some genes get activated, some genes don't, right? For example, when my son was born, he was born with a bald head already on it. My daughter didn't have that when she was born. <laughs> okay, so some genes of you get activated, some genes don't, but genetic coding to an extent can get influenced, right? Okay, we have that, what else? Education. Okay, education. So depending on whether you're IGCSE or CBSC or uh, you know state syllabus, your education is gonna influence the way you are. Okay, Pinay. Hobbies. 
the society we live in. Little more specific. Who in the society and why? The society gives us morals. You know, morals give makes us understand what is right, what is wrong. Society gives us moral as in how how do they give it like? No, society influences us based on what is good and what is right. It already has a set of morals, you know, that stating that this is right, this is wrong. Yeah, can you give me an example? Like... Sorry, what? Can you give an example? Naalu beer ganda lendu varim. Yeah, something like that. You know, it, it, it's it's like Marthoma <laughs> thing. No, that's a typical Marthoma thing. Happy hour, and then don't worry. Okay. Oh, so okay. So I'm gonna say society, right? Okay, society. Okay, I'll agree with you now that you've given me something. Okay, but it's still that that aspect is still vague because are we ready to do anything that the society says? Like society change na parin na lla namal jigo, or are we specific about some things? No, when no, we talk no, about no. society. Sorry, somebody was talking. No, no, no. You can continue. So when we talk about society, it's it's like our you know the first contact person whom we are coming in contact with, something like that. Maybe our close friends, our families, they all make a society, right? Okay. Something like that. You know, even like let's say going to church, that is also a part of the society, correct? Yeah, we mentioned religion, so that might go in. So. i think uh, perhaps you are talking about what i'm trying to show is perhaps all of this you consider society yeah yes the whole thing yeah it's, it's a society okay what else what else some more give me one or two more a hobby that a you culture develop. what culture what culture again culture pa whatever culture we are brought up in you know that that also actually influences us what is culture it's so vague don't don't yeah. get on being the devil's advocate over here so that we think yeah oh, how should we define culture it, it's a huge mass of topic actually culture il va nimge yeno yaar culture yaar the culture yaar culture nan culture nim culture kannada culture tamil culture yaar culture malayali culture yen malayali culture malayali culture is better than ethics values sorry i lost you could you say it again Oops. Sorry, I lost you. Could you say it again? Hello. Culture no matter the set of values, ethics, which made up of something is come in contact with. Hello. अपन आर वैल्यूज़ आर एथिक्स हम चुम्मा अंग इरुन्ने इल्ला आर वैल्यूज़ एथिक्स एड गोना. For example, निंगल पम बैंगलोर लोला नमला आने के लिए. Bangalore has like people from all ethnicities, all cultures, different linguistic backgrounds. You know, all of them have values and culture. But no, Achin, Which we are bo- we are brought up in a different set of cultural aspect. Like, let's say I belong to a Malayali family. They have a different set of beliefs. They have a different set of ideas. That is how we are influenced. In we we not necessarily we have to you know for Bangalore's culture is is a Kannadigas culture. You know, it belongs to a geographical context as well. You know? something like that mm-hmm. so our ideas are certain ideas and our uh, you know um, uh, certain beliefs about uh, uh, the society that's that's culture actually and it is okay. uh, put in my mind by my closely related contacts like you know let's say our family or my friends or or uh, the church or the educational system all these things okay thank you Upon you know, you know, since we have a uh, less conscious. time, let me just. Sorry. One's conscious determines oh. one what one is. Then tell me a little more about what you mean by conscious. Uh, conscious, conscious is like a like a inner voice, like the voice of your mind. Hmm. And I think that's what's most in, unique uh, to each individual. Okay. I mean. like when the child was in this green face you see this green face right was the conscience there oh is it something that you get it was always there but it wasn't 
like you know it wasn't activated to respond to certain things mm -hmm. so how do you activate your conscience like does a does a newborn baby have a conscience a newborn baby has a conscience to raise its hand or to cry it it knows it's able to connect with certain people better mm. but are you, are you confusing conscience with consciousness because those could be two different things according to psychology conscience and consciousness could be different things so conscience here the way you are mentioning it could be um you know choosing between right or wrong yes you know, that's what i mean yeah 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 so that, do you think a child has that or is it developed by what the child is taught or influenced you know this climbing this ladder up like that so does the it child does, know? The climbing the ladder up helps like you know helps you build or improve your conscience but mm -hmm. it's always so, present suppose a child was in like a locked up in a jail and grew up in a jail for 7 years without contact with anybody would the child have a conscience regarding right and wrong no no we have we thought you know sharpen your conscience yeah so yeah thank you so much everybody um, i just wanted to point this like like what <laughs> what we have painted over here through our suggestions over this this is me Ansalaya. we are so much and there's more to this we just don't have time there's the, the music videos that we watch there's the movies that we watch you know all of this ad netflix we didn't bring all that in the work environment i'll just quickly you know thank you for this so all of this is me look at me i'm so complicated what's left to say it's me because i'm a combination of all these things yan nu parney endo baaki undu appo am i really do i really exist and look at all of these things you know family friend religion education society conscience music movies culture these could be at war with each other is that true or not not all of them are on the same page isn't that true so that means that means every day i have all these strings pulling at me and i have all these things trying to tell me what is right and what is wrong my goodness that looks very complicated every day and no wonder life gets tough decisions are difficult just Im imagine so many emotions so many thoughts so many baggages we are carrying this every day in our life's journey forward like this indra padale and that becomes very 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 difficult so i just want to quickly go to this we have parental influences we have friends what they say how they say it matters to us religion faith media movies twitter reddit music videos netflix we have those of you who are working have your problems at workplace what to do on the weekend whether to drink or not whether to do drugs you know whether to spend so much money your education matters your workplace matters your environment your facilities climate exposure all of these matter my goodness i look very complicated and every day i am going through this trouble and throw into this mix the pandemic and its influence on the economy and the struggles that i go through so it looks very very difficult and no wonder sometimes our choices so the problem is we daily we are at war because the different parts of us are at war with each other how do we unify this how many of you sleep peacefully at night without having to worry what tomorrow is going to be how many of you are able to sleep assured that things are going to be fine tomorrow most of us most of us including me at times tend to be at war within ourselves and that is because we are formed by so many things our formation i just wanted to bring the word to you our formation is very complicated sometimes we are like a basket in which a lot of things are thrown in and we just carry all these baggages around with us every day we are lugging these things around with us every day and we calling all of this me and we want to do this we want to be good we want to be good christians we want to do that and we want to reach our goals and we are unable to reach our goals that adds to the frustration what does it mean to be me 
based on what we said just now, this is the me that we painted. If this is me, this is a lot of things. So at a time like this, how do we know what is me? Or what is my possibility? What is my purpose? Let me go further. You might have heard the story of the chicken who grew up among uh, you know, his brothers and sisters, but he looked very different, different, ugly. He had different, different beak. He grew up among them for many years, but he kept growing bigger and bigger. And one day, this big bird comes and talks to him and asks him, why are you here? He said, this is my family. He said, no, uh, you look very different. He said, no, but I've grown up here all my life. So this big bird takes him, throws him, you know, flies up into the sky, throws him down, and then uh, makes him, does this again and again till he flies. And when he starts flying after an hour, when he gets, stops being scared, and when this chicken starts flying, the big bird comes and tells him, do you know why you can fly and why? you don't belong there that's because you're not a chicken you are an eagle and that changes the game for that little chicken who thought he was a chicken all this while because he was an eagle maybe the eggs got mixed up some at some point we don't know how the eggs got over there but he was always worried that his siblings and his mother felt that he was different he was treated he, he was treated badly he was marginalized he was made to do things that he didn't want to do and was not made to do. But then this story kind of sums up most of our lives where we try to be the chicken when we're actually the eagle. You know, Martin Lloyd-Jones, uh, one of the most famous preachers in the Western world, uh, he talks about something known as disposition. He says disposition is that which controls our choices every day. And this is not something that resides in your conscience, but it happens in the precognitive level. It decides from there because, and this, this happens as a result of all these influences. We have a disposition. So all of these things, any, you know, push us to make certain choice in life. And he says, when you come to Christ, you get a new disposition, a new thing that influences your choices and who you become each day. And he's talking about a new formation. So when Paul says in Galatians chapter 2, verse 24, 20, that I have been crucified with Christ and it is no longer I, but Christ who lives in me. He's talking about a new formation because if I'm going to live like this all my life, this is going to be tough. This is going to be tough. This is going to wear me down. This is going to make me emotionally unstable. This is going to keep me anxious all the while and constantly I'm in the experience of war. Let's talk about a new thing. 1, 6, 20 says, we are created in the image of God. And that is a complete deformation as given from Buddhism as, can you hear me? I, I hope you can hear me, it shows my connection is unstable. Buddhism, Islam, Hinduism, Jainism, all have completely different ways of understanding the human being, but it's the Judeo-Christian view that gives you from Genesis chapter 1, 26 and 27, that we are, every person is created in the image of God. And every person carries the image and likeness of God. Those who know the you know, first three chapters of the Bible know about human beings very well. We are created in the image of God. We have desires. We have intense passion. Cain of his desire to please God, but didn't you know, carry you know, you know, the way Abel did. He eventually just killed him because he just saw that God was pleased more with him. And that is an intensity of passion, that kind of jealousy that came within him. Adam and Eve, they have this desire that is, you know, uh, put in that influence something that is asked to him. Did God tell you not to eat? Something happened created. And that doubt creates that desire in, in them to try out something. So we see desires in human beings are also created uh, over time. But that is, you know, life when we are living like this, Christianity gives an option called regeneration. And that regeneration, uh, there's a thing called doctrine of regeneration. Now be careful when you look up the doctrine of regeneration. If you're going to Google regeneration, they're going to put you in a, a website called bible.org where only one particular understanding of regeneration is given, especially from the, uh, you know, uh, very highly evangelistic uh, understandings and little Bible readings of regeneration. But regeneration, as a you know, traditional church like ours, we understand regeneration as a new birth. Like 
regenerate. Those of you who play PUBG or video games know that when you die, you know, up to a certain number of times, you can regenerate, be reborn. So regeneration is an opportunity to be born anew and have a new set of influences. So when you regenerate, this is not how you get influenced. Of course, they are part of you, but you can say with Paul, it is no longer I, but Christ who lives in me. Christ begins to be your new disposition. And how can we continue that life? If you're born, if you're born afresh, if you are born again, or if you're regenerated, how do you how do you live that life? Let me go fast a little further. I know my time is up. Galatians chapter 3, verse 26 to 28. Paul is something very interesting. Amazing. So um, for all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Slave nor free, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. It is a new kind of formation where differences don't matter. You are all one in Christ. So whether you're slave, whether you're free, whether you're man, whether you're woman, whether you're Jew, whether you're Greek, all of you are one in Christ. And that regeneration in Christ, which Paul says happens through baptism, which is begin, begun at baptism, creates a new society in itself. And this is a grand vision. This is way beyond what we think in everyday life. This is a vision for a whole community, a whole society. So we are baptized into a community in order to live as regenerated beings. And so in the hope of regenerating again, a child is baptized and brought into this new life. So we, we can call it a sacrament of formation. We are formed through. So how do we continue this regeneration life? That happens through, uh, through the word of God and through sacraments, through word and through worship. And we might think, oh, you know, I used to think, I definitely used to think our Holy Communion service was so boring. I used to think daydream and stand there when I was a child. And like, it was totally boring. But when those things started making sense, and these things have been there for a really long time for a reason. These things are ancient for a reason. I'll tell you the story of Claudius Buchanan. He came to India as a, uh, he, was a, he was a priest uh, in the uh, Anglican Church and he came to India at the behest of the government and he was a researcher and uh, uh, he, he did a research on the plants in Malabar and by his interest he went and uh, he was surprised to see there were Christians in southern India in very rural places and they had these churches and they had the cross and they had the same faith which we, he had in England. And he was like, how is this possible? Their vestments look different and their worship sounded different, but the Bible was same. And he found that there were a Syriac Bibles in one Syriac Bible in most of these churches. And a few of them would read them and interpret it to other people. And he writes in his book in 1810, this church is degenerating. This church is not at its best position for many years due to the problems that have happened in the Malangra region. But the only thing that has sustained this community is that they have the whole Bible and they have a liturgical worship that has sustained them over time. That has not changed. The people changed, the regimes changed, uh, you know, the situations changed, the financial situation changed, uh, the possibilities changed, but these things took them from generation to generation. And this was said in 1810, but this is the same thing that we have been following till now. So things might change, but this truth and traditions are true. And so the truth, I, by truth, I mean gospel and scripture, which forms us in a very different way. It forms us in a very different way and gives us Christ. And Christ has the moral to live on this earth. So he is the truth. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And following him has certain practices, uh, which we can call as traditions. And when we say tradition, we tend to feel our oh, traditions are all empty. But then there is a definition by tradition of tradition given by Jaroslav Pelikan, a theologian, who says, tradition is the living faith of the dead and traditionalism is the dead faith of the living. Tradition is the living faith of the dead, but traditionalism, but only go holding on to it without having a changed life, traditionalism is the dead faith of the living. So truth and tradition take us. So when I, when I say traditions, I'm specifically aiming at sacramental formation where worship the word uh, you know our sacraments 
remind us who we are in God's eyes and reminds who God is to us so that we can look at Jesus Christ and follow him. Because he is the one to follow. He is the model to follow. He is the one uh, who's you. That's how we come to Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. Where Paul says, I'm a Jew. I was taught by Gamaliel. I'm a Roman citizen. I was brought up in Tarsus, but I have a top education. I speak many languages. I speak Hebrew, Greek. I speak Aramaic. I have all of these qualifications, but I throw all of this away to know Christ Jesus. And he says, I, am, I have been crucified with Christ. I've crucified all those qualifications. All of those things I, I can exalt in. I crucify all of that. And it is no longer I, but Christ who lives in me. And that happens through continuous relationship with the world, with the community, through the breaking of bread, through praising God, through worship, and going on like that as Christians. So it's called a Christocentric formation where we have Christ at the center. And that's what I want to introduce you to. I don't want to explain it a lot more, but we've been trying to do that, but maybe unaware that we have been formed by so many things. The question is, what are you exposing yourself to? Because your choices are not your choices. You have been influenced. Your upbringing and your, you know, all the things that you told me, even your desires have been programmed. Today, we are living in a highly connected uh, world in which we are even, uh, you know, we are even uh, taught what to think, what to know. Even your news is programmed by apps like InShorts or Google News. Because they show you what, you know, what, to, uh, what, what news you should listen to. They tell you. So we are being programmed in turn, in turn by technology. So whether there is an independent free me, that is a big question. But in time like that, to really understand who it is that God wants us uh, to be, that needs to be understood in the light of the gospel. And I would encourage each one of us to try out Christ by crucifying ourselves and being formed. Because until then, we are a huge basket of things that are influencing us. May God bless each one of us. Sanjana Prarthikin. Sanjana. Almighty Father, please be with each and every one of us, O God, who have gathered us here, God. Uh, help us, give us the strength, O God, to, uh, to get through this space and to get through this pandemic, O Lord. There's so many people who are out there who are facing so many issues, who are being sick, who are going through a lot of things in life, O Lord. Help us support one another and be there for each other, O God. And as I said, we have alone by ourselves, we have so many things to deal with. But we all need to like find the strength and look at Jesus, O oh Lord, as our role model and just walk the way He has. O oh God, help us get through this case, O oh God. I pray for everyone who is gathered here and who is not, who is not able to attend this, O oh Lord. Please be with each and every one of us. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen. Doji. Doji, Paul, out of thanks. Doji, what I think he dropped off because of network issue. Oh, okay, okay. Then please. Uh, first of all, uh, seeing this crowd of around 92 who had actually joined and now it's dropped down. But uh, thanks everyone for joining in. Uh, we have people from all over, from Bangalore, Chennai, Hyderabad, uh, Kuwait, as Achan mentioned, from Bombay as well. Uh, so thanks everyone for joining in and uh, uh, into a small fellowship of Hebal Pali where we uh, thought of doing something like this. Uh, also, uh, Georgie Achin for accepting this invitation and uh, uh, and giving a beautiful message that we, we can all actually carry. And uh, during this time or during these days when we are actually rediscovering ourselves sitting at home, giving more time to ourselves, it's so important to know who I am or who me is. And uh, thanks, Sacha, for this uh, beautiful message of uh, that you shared. Um, uh, I also thank uh, Prince Sacha and Acha for your initiation of this entire, uh, for this meeting that we had. Uh, also, Sanu, especially for helping, uh, helping this session work on. Um, thanks, everyone. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you all. That's good.
Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you are mighty, you are glorious, you are awesome. You are our creator, you are our father, you are our parent. Lord, you are everything to us. Lord, you have put us in this world with a specific purpose. You have created us in your image, Lord Jesus, but sin has distorted that image in us, Lord. Lord, we are pulled in this world by so many things that come into our lives, so many influences, good and bad, Lord Jesus. And at the end of the day, we wonder what it means to be us, Lord Jesus, what it means to be me, what it means to be that self. And we realize, Lord, we are a bundle of influences, Lord, but yet you have created with a unique purpose. You have put us into this community. You have put us into the city, Lord Jesus. You have enabled us all to know you and to live for you. And we know that you had a purpose in that, Lord. But we can't do this on our own, Lord. There are so many baggages that pull us to different sides. And during this pandemic, as we go through a lot of uncertainty, as we go through a time of difficulty, as we go through a time of emotional, overwhelming situations, Lord, emotionally overwhelming situations, we pray that we will be, we will be strengthened to give ourselves to you and follow your lead, Lord. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You know our past, our present, and the possibilities of the future. So help us to crucify all of us upon the cross and allow you to take the throne of our lives, Lord. Influence us, Lord. Shape us, Lord. Help us be regenerated in you. Help us to be formed by word, by your word and through the worship, Lord Jesus. Many of these things, we feel they don't make sense to us. But these have stayed over the ages, shaping us in our communities and shaping generations uh, in the past, Lord Jesus. We pray that you shape us according to your will. Help us discover you anew and find out the new possibilities that lie embedded within us, Lord. Lord, you have called us to be a blessing to this world and to bless the nations, irrespective of their caste, creed, ethnicity or nationality, Lord Jesus. You have called us to be a blessing to this world and we pray that you fulfill your purpose through us all. Thank you for our church. Thank you for our friends. Thank you for all our families. Thank you for giving us this youth group and this online platform to come together and praise your name. We thank you for Prince Sachin and his leadership. Bless your children's ministry as a family. We pray for Hebal Church and the youth. Bless your children, each one of them, Lord. We pray for all the people who joined us from different places. May we all be, uh, be, be under the shadow of your cross and follow your path and your path alone. In Jesus' master's name, we pray. Amen. 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 സംബന്ധവും സഹവാസവും നാം എല്ലാവരും കൂടെ ഇരിക്കുക ക്രിസ്തുവിന്റെ പാത സ്വീകരിച്ചുകൊണ്ട് അവന്റെ പിന്നാലെ നടന്ന് അവനെ പോരായിത്തീരുക നമ്മൾ ഓരോരുത്തരെയും ബലപ്പെടുത്തുകയും ശക്തീകരിക്കുകയും ചെയ്യും മാറാകട്ടെ താങ്ക് യു നിങ്ങൾ എല്ലാവരും പല സ്ഥലത്ത് നിന്ന് വന്നല്ലോ നിങ്ങൾ എല്ലാവരും കാണാനിടയായി ഒന്നിച്ച് ലഭിച്ച കൂട്ടായ്മ എല്ലാ സന്തോഷത്തോടെ ഓർക്കുന്നു ദൈവം നമ്മെ വീണ്ടും ഏതെങ്കിലും കൂക്ക് സ്ഥാനത്ത് വെച്ച് ഇപ്രകാരം ഇത് മുഖാതിരങ്ങളിലൂടെ കണ്ടുകൊണ്ട് വന്ന ദൈവമിടയാകട്ടെ ഇപ്പോഴും അച്ഛനെ നന്ദിയോടെ ഓർക്കുന്നു അച്ഛൻ നമുക്കിവിടെ ഇനിയും ഈ ദേശത്തുണ്ടല്ലോ നമുക്ക് അച്ഛനെ പ്രയോജനപ്പെടുത്താം തീർച്ചയായും അച്ഛനെ കാണാം ദൈവം നമ്മെ എല്ലാവരെയും സഹായിക്കട്ടെ താങ്ക് യു ഓൾ താങ്ക് യു താങ്ക് യു അച്ഛാ താങ്ക് യു